Hi, I thought I would make this video about my thoughts on the importance of database architecture as of 2017. I've had the opportunity to work with quite a few systems, not just database systems. Um, I've, while I have worked with database architectures that have been built by other people, I got to see around. I also am familiar with the uh, Microsoft best practices because that's how I learned it. Um, I learned uh, the theory prior to implementation, uh, which is something not a lot of database our senior our, our database developers uh, seem to have uh, learned in that manner. Uh, what it seems like is that in most cases people have learned uh, have built prior to um, learning the shortcomings of building in other ways. Uh, so, for this, as of 2017, based on what I've seen, I'm going to state why I um, think database architecture is important and where you can actually save. Because building a database according to best practices and taking certain things um, into consideration while building it can actually save you money exponentially. Why? Because um, I'll get into that afterwards. But what's happening is that because a lot of senior developers and uh, people that have est become established in the, in the industry, uh, not all, but quite a few, uh, have, uh, in have gotten into that uh, place, gotten a senior position and uh, um, worked with databases without actually updating their knowledge. Um, so what happened as a result is that they're recirculating and they're building these databases without considering that other people might have other ideas. And if you read these books and you've actually built uh, websites and stuff, knowing these uh, basic core concepts, you'll understand the benefits of them, which rather than uh, thinking you're well off and not knowing um, the issues that are encountered from not designing it in the best way possible. Of course, building, uh, sometimes you just, just got to do the job. However, if you build it while taking these considerations into uh, place, you will encounter less issues later on. And you won't point fingers because what happens a lot of times is that uh, less experienced developers don't know uh, why they're having difficulty and then they'll place the blame on somewhere else, someone else. Not even less experienced, less knowledgeable. This is why you'll probably see um, better performance at companies like Google's. They'll, they'll crank out these systems at a faster rate and they'll be able to integrate these systems without as many problems. It's because these people um, just know more. So uh, they're better students, they've read, and uh, when you have a bunch of people that know a lot building systems, it just goes a lot more smoothly. A bunch of driven people that know a lot. Why do you want to take uh, or build a system in the optimal way? One, over the long term, you're going to have improved performance, and your system's not going to encounter speed problems ahead of time because as a database architect and someone that um, the purpose of database architect is to build a system that can do what you need it to do and address as many problems ahead of time with regards to DBA tasks, deployment tasks, as well as um, uh, data access. Um, prior to those problems occurring. That's the pr purpose of building a system. That's why in most cases you want senior developers architecting these systems because they've encountered those problems before and uh, know how to build it in order to avoid them. Uh, however, you have to realize that uh, just because if you're a senior developer doesn't necessarily mean you've encountered those problems or there are not other people that haven't encountered a different set of problems that could 
be relevant to you when designing that system. Therefore, you have to keep on reading and you have to keep on building. Uh, that way you, you will see the issues and you could do something to address them and explain it if you can't address them. I'll explain some things uh, that I've noticed and how you can go about addressing a few problems ahead of time as of 2017. Um, but for now, I'll continue. Um, so by improved performance over time, what I mean is that uh, your database is not going to slow down preemptively. You're not going to uh, have to migrate to another database system uh, ahead of time. Furthermore, there will be fewer data issues. By fewer data issues, what I mean is that oftentimes when you're building a site or you're building a database system, what happens is that you it works for what you need it to do, but when you're integrating it with other systems because the actual inputs haven't been hardened, it's going to have difficulty integrating because there are breaks in the data for what it's needed for. What this means is that um, handling it later on will cost you more than if you handle it preemptively. And since every system that uses that data is going to encounter those problems, you're going to have to, uh, the actual workload increases exponentially if you handle it further down the pipeline than if you were to handle it ahead of time. Uh, this is redundant, but improvement, uh, my third line was, it will not slow down ahead of its time. That's the same as my first uh, item. I'll skip that. Uh, decreased maintenance and risk of failure. If a database is uh, not built uh, properly, you'll have increased maintenance costs because a lot of uh, systems actually cost more to maintain than to build, oddly enough. And that's because uh, as you make changes and as more data gets in, oftentimes uh, systems that don't uh, compensate for things ahead of time have things like uh, broken objects and uh, uh, slowdowns. These could be handled, like in SQL we have the we could see you could utilize sys.dependencies tables in order to identify broken objects and you could actually make a script to um, flag them but when you read online a lot of times uh, people don't seem to know that so these people that are writing these articles are like uh, as the database grows and stuff we have a lot of broken objects and it causes problems because we don't know where it's breaking but you could actually detect that but because they don't, because there were no basics or fund foundational uh, knowledge sets when they were learning how these databases operated, they weren't familiar with those concepts and thus these issues occurred when in reality they're a simple fix. Um, not simple, but you could fix them uh, and they're not unfixable and it there are ways to handle it rather than saying it goes unnoticed. Um, so if you follow, uh, and it won't fail, because if people are dealing with the database and they're making these changes and stuff to it, and uh, they don't know what they're doing, they're going to break it. They're going to introduce a level of bugs, and then they're going to place blame. They're going to say it's something else. Uh, when in reality it's their knowledge set that's causing the problems. Um, because, as I said in the past, the amount of knowledge to get to work with databases wasn't that, that high and the standards weren't uh, as developed and they stopped learning at some point. So as a result, what happened is that uh, oftentimes developer priorities swap as they get older and they stop learning and as a result uh, it depreciates their skill sets 
because there are newer technologies can, that can handle a lot of the problems that uh, um, are caused due to lack of knowledge, but they just don't learn it because they're comfortable with their knowledge set and they're looking at security rather than uh, lessening the workloads. So as people that know more go up the ladder, what happens is that they no less go up the ladder. Uh, if this happens, it doesn't happen everywhere, what happens is that the actual um, amount of work that everyone else has to do, especially with maintenance tasks like DBAs uh, or DevOps, uh, for things like that, they'll increase the workload rather than decreasing it. Um, just food for thought. Um, and if you follow standards, like you use naming conventions and you... Uh, uh, you'll have easier automation of deployments and testing. So for example, the reason why you want to use uh, naming conventions in a table to distinguish it from a configuration table from a regular table is so that as a DBA, you can go through all those configuration tables and identify them with the script. So having these identifiers on the tables will help you, or even with stored procs, you could do the same. That way you can actually easier make, you can more easily make scripts in order to go through both the front end code and the back end code when testing or when you need to do deployments in order to identify the differences um, and identify bugs. And then you could automate a lot of the work that is often done manually um, and reduce the workload. So you'll be able to get those tasks done quicker and with uh, lesser uh, roadblocks. Fewer downstream issues by architecting a system properly or uh, compensating for things ahead of time uh, when integrating these systems you will uh, not have to handle them later on I believe I mentioned this before and I'm going to mention it again in my list because I didn't read over it before starting this presentation uh, but yeah you want to handle things near the source rather than uh, down the pipeline otherwise uh, what happens is that uh, you increase the workload for everybody. So all the different departments that use that data are going to have to uh, compensate for the issues of your system. And they're going to accept it as a matter of fact, when in reality, uh, you should have fixed it at the source. Um, with the older database systems, this the ability with the older, not database system, with older applications, this was the ability to harden inputs wasn't exactly there at all times. Um, I will give suggestions later on on how to handle this, my opinions on how to handle this, but for now, let's move on. Easier systems integration. Blah, I've said that two other times. It's easier to understand. So if you understand database architecture and the reasons behind uh, building things certain ways, and yet to understand that there are a lot of systems out there that are built in uh, built by people that weren't familiar with standards. They work for what they were built for, great. However, when it comes to integrating them and uh, making modifications for them, uh, it's not so easy. Um, it's easier to modify and enhance. By this, what I mean is that um, modifying the database without introducing errors will be easier and adding functionality Modify and enhance. I guess that means the same thing. I don't know why I did that. And because you're able to do everything faster, because you compensated for these issues ahead of time, you will be able to uh, have happier customers and get these get your reports to your consumers quicker because the data just flows through the pipeline rather than having human intervention to fix these issues along the line, um, which is going to cost you money. Um, and could run your business into the ground. What you want to do is get rid of those redundant tasks as quickly as possible. Uh, and actually have consumable data that you can make a profit off of as fast as possible. That is the key thing with technology. Everything should be automated and you should just focus on profit-driven uh, activities to give your business the edge. Um, so... On a side note, the reason why you want to compensate for these things and build your database so it doesn't break um, ahead of time, architecting it right, is because when the database goes down, 
it's often going to take down other systems that are reliant on it with it. And because of that, it's going to cost you much more money than if you'd handled it ahead of time. So by uh, compensating for these things, it you could um, prevent chaos because you have to remember that when it goes down, it goes down hard. So you want to be preemptive and uh, take these things into consideration. There are probably some other things, but this is what I'm thinking as of 2017. Okay, so here's some tips that um, I've seen uh, that I'm going to throw out there that you could uh, compensate for when developing a database in order to um, reduce issues that can come up later on. Address data integrity issues as early as possible up the pipeline. If you can swap out a system, swap it out if, it's, if the data is beyond compare. If the data is beyond repair, get rid of the data. Don't even use it or don't even load it into your analytical database um, so that your the actual trustworthiness of the data is increased and harden those inputs whenever possible. Use table annotations to identify what type of data is held within tables and in stored procs and in functions. That way, DBA tasks will be scriptable and you won't have to actually go through the tables. You can use the sys. Uh, objects uh, system table in order to do a lot of your work. Do not delete configurable data, instead disable it. Limit the layers that data flows through in order to make it debuggable and um, address issues earlier on. So if you have less systems that the data flows through um, and it's less manipulated, you'll be able to um, identify the source of a bug earlier on. However, if you have hundreds of systems or tens of systems that uh, that is that data is flowing through and there's an issue with it, it's going to be hell to figure out what's uh, what the source of an issue is if it appears, which it could because you'll have you'll be integrating all these different systems as time goes on and someone's going to make a mistake. Um, so what you want to do is limit the layers and limit the complexity and by limit by cleaning the data and having a source of truth earlier on the complexity downstream is actually reduced even though it might not seem that way and hardening the inputs of a website that'll make it even easier uh, for anal for analytics or for um, uh, integrated databases if you can actually this is an idea I haven't implemented yet but I've been thinking about it if you can push form constraints uh, from a central source uh, or from a central department uh, that handles the requests from the different departments, what you can do is make things conform. And then if the people that are entering the information don't uh, uh, enter it right, it'll throw out an error ahead of time. That way you won't have to have someone checking over the information. It'll just uh, flow through properly and then you could uh, handle everything if you push it from a certain central source. But getting other people to actually do the work is difficult oftentimes. But getting people to comply without uh, um, without being able to force it from a central department. If they enforce it themselves, chances are they're not going to get around to it. Or they're, it's going to be difficult to get them to get around to it. Or they'll do something weird. Uh, and utilize standards across all systems. Microsoft has a lot of certifications on database architecture and stuff. Uh, a lot of books are out there. Um, I think Microsoft is, for what they do, uh, and what I'm familiar with is uh, great because they've really taught things out and uh, built their lesson plans. So as of 2017, I think that they're the best for uh, information regarding how to work with the systems that they're building. If you go to third-party information sources, they might teach something else or uh, you, you don't know where they're coming from. Because, for example, when I read a lot of articles online, they say as databases grow larger, there are a lot of broken objects and stuff, but there are ways to detect these broken objects. Um, 
but it seems that a lot of people that are working with these databases don't seem to realize that ahead of time. So yeah, uh, those are my thoughts as of 2017. Uh, it might change as I get to work with different systems and get exposed to new things. However, that is all for now. Uh, Till next time, I hope this helped. Um, yeah, so later.